One type of vehicle which isn't being electrified at the rate that we would have hoped for is the van. Yep, yeah, the utility van. Many people use these a lot more than what you and I would use a normal car. For example, the average person only drives around 30 to 40 kilometers per day or around 20 miles per day. However, vans they're used a lot more than that therefore they contribute a lot more to emissions being emitted per vehicle what does that mean well it means that electrifying vans is actually far more important than people realize fortunately in the united states ford is trying to electrify their van fleet quickly and so are other car companies including canoe and rivian however Toyota actually sells a lot more vans than Ford, Canoe, or Rivian. Even putting those three together, still Toyota sells way more vans per year. Fortunately, Toyota are actually planning to electrify the world's most popular van. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome back, everyone else. You know, I have criticized Toyota. And you know what? For good reason. What am I talking about? Well, Toyota has literally spent millions of dollars lobbying Congress, lobbying governments, and putting themselves in powerful lobbying positions in a various range of countries worldwide in order to slow down the world's transition to electric cars. Even if you are the most hardcore Toyota fan, you cannot deny the fact that Toyota is trying to slow down electrification. Why can't you deny it? Well, because the CEO of Toyota has admitted to this fact himself. He has admitted that yes, they are trying to slow down electrification efforts because why? Simply because, well, he hasn't admitted this, but because Toyota is not ready. However, they say they will be ready soon, sort of, in a way. At least they do plan on electrifying the world's most popular van, which is the Toyota Hiace. Japanese outlet Best Car Web says that Toyota is working on an electric Hiace, which is due in only two years time in 2025. It'll ride on the dedicated electric E-Tinger or E-T-N-G-A platform of the Toyota BZ4X and the Subaru Solterra. Now, hopefully by 2025, Toyota have worked out how to keep the wheels on this platform. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, well, Toyota is trying to buy back the BZ4X cars from people who purchased them. There wasn't many people who purchased them yet. The reason being that the wheels literally can fall off and Toyota doesn't know why. I'm really baffled by that, but that's the case. But that's the situation we're in right now. Toyota and Lexus are in the process of rolling out a range of ETNGA models, including the already revealed Lexus RZ and teased 16 of them last year in concept form. Now, to be honest, to be fair, if you understand the Japanese auto market, you'll be very well aware that concept models have very little to do with reality in Japan. The Japanese automakers have released thousands of concept cars that never came to light, were never produced. In fact, every single year they produce concept models of vehicles that they say are like a kind of a preview of the new upcoming car, but they never ever eventuate in the form that we are shown them in. That's just the way the Japanese auto market does it. China doesn't do this. It's not part of the Chinese automotive culture. If they release a concept, that becomes the model for the following year or whenever it's delivered, it becomes the model. So we don't actually know whether or not these 16 different models that Toyota released will ever eventuate. But we do know the Toyota Hiace will be electrified in 2025. The fleet of concepts included a tiny micro box, which will compete with the Hongwan Mini EV, which is the third best-selling electric car in the world, and larger mid-box vans, though even the latter appeared to be smaller than a high ace. Now, the micro box and the mid box, those particular vehicles, they're really just for the Japanese market. They're not really sold anywhere else in the world. Japanese love those types of cars. Best Car Web reports the upcoming electric van may have a slightly shorter luggage compartment than combustion powered high ace models, with occupants sitting slightly further back in the previous 
forward control H200 series high ace, which could mean it will be a safer car. I'm going to guess it will be much safer. And there has been some very serious safety concerns over current internal combustion engine Toyota high ace vehicles. A lot of people report that there are some significant accidents. They're not all that road crash worthy. That's just what I've heard. I'm not sure if that's true. That's what a lot of people have said on forums and online and in car boards as well. Now, I think this new electric version will be much safer than the current internal combustion engine version. For one, it won't have a big heavy motor at the front of the car. The weight distribution in the van will be much, much better. You can distribute the weight of that battery pack over the complete portion of the car, meaning it would have much better handling and safe characteristics compared to the petrol or gas powered versions. It may also feature a longer nose and look more like the H300 series that have been sold in Australia since 2019. In my opinion, the H300 High Ace looks way better than the H200 High Ace. Toyota still sells the previous H200 model in Japan. The almost 20 year old model is reportedly expected to continue on sale for the foreseeable future. The newer, wider generation of High Ace isn't sold in Japan, except in related Grand Ace people mover form. Toyota is reportedly working on an electric successor to the Town Ace a smaller van that slots in under the high ace in Japan. This could also spawn an electric people mover. Now surprisingly, Toyota actually sells electric vans in Europe. Not many people know this, but the reality is the electric vans that they sell in Europe called the Pro Ace Electric and the Pro Ace City Electric are actually rebadged Stellantis electric vehicles. So right now, Toyota is about to release a Corolla which BYD manufacture, and they sell. So that will be their new electric Toyota Corolla. And they sell electric vans in Europe, which are made by Stellantis. So what actually are those vans? Well, carexpert.com.au says that the Pro Ace Electric is a rebadged Peugeot Expert, while the Pro Ace City Electric is a rebadged Peugeot Partner. What about the electric vehicle market in Australia? I've talked about the US market, which is pretty much dominated by Ford right now. The electric van market in Australia has been until now limited to the small Renault Kangoo ZE. In other words, that's pretty much the only electric van you can get right now here in Australia, but that is about to change. With the Mercedes-Benz e Vito due here this year and the Ford e-Transit and the new Renault Kangoo e-Tech electric both due in 2023, meaning we're going to go from one model to five within the space of 12 months. In 2024, Ford will launch its e-Transit Custom Renault will launch its master e-tech electric and Mercedes-Benz intends to have its next generation e-sprinter here. LDV also intends to introduce an electric nine in Australia. So that'll be the Chinese electric van. There'll be a lot more Chinese electric vans coming soon. I can pretty much guarantee that. They wanna take that market. They're gonna be undercutting Mercedes, Ford and Renault drastically on price in order to take market share here in Australia and particularly in Europe as well. Late last year, Toyota teased a range of electric hatchbacks, sedans, crossovers, sports cars, a large pickup, and a bunch of other stuff. We don't know if any of those will actually eventuate. I'm assuming some of them will though. Toyota plans to introduce 30 electric vehicles by 2030, led by the BZ4X, with the goal of selling 3.5 million EVs annually by 2030. In other words, Toyota is saying only 35% of its product mix will be electric in 2030. Personally, that is a cause for concern if you're a Toyota investor, because realistically, I don't think that the majority of Toyota buyers will want to buy a non-electric vehicle in eight years time. Now, to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, Toyota sold 10.5 million vehicles globally in 2021. Nine million of those were branded as Toyota branded vehicles, but basically that was Toyota's portfolio, 10.5 million sales. Now they're saying, that only 3.5 million of that 10.5 million they hope to sell in 2030 will be electric. But surprisingly, this plan from Toyota is actually a huge increase over an earlier plan to sell only 2 million EVs by 2030. Toyota have changed their minds recently on a number of different things. They've said EVs are not good for the environment. They've said EVs are not good for you. You shouldn't buy one. Now they're saying maybe you should, but um, you should also consider buying our internal combustion engine cars even eight years time from now. Now they've changed their mind. Two million EVs in 2030, 
They've upped that to 3.5, but still out of 10.5 million, it's still not a very big number. And for good reason, despite its EV goals, which have been, well, until recently, very, very pessimistic and pretty low ball figures, Toyota has been the subject of criticism for a very slow EV rollout and reports it has lobbied various governments to weaken their EV policies. I mean, to be fair, Toyota even lobbies school children, tries to brainwash school children into believing that electric vehicles are not good for the planet. They do that in Japan. So they do go a fair way to try to convince people that EVs are not the solution. Now, recently, Toyota has pushed back against claims that it is uh, not a fan of electric cars, arguing its early adoption of hybrids and its commitment to hybrids has helped reduce its carbon footprint. I think that's true. Toyota's commitment to selling the Prius and to really uh, pushing that vehicle has definitely helped reduce Toyota's carbon footprint. However, we're going to judge them on that. We're going to judge them on what they plan to do for the next 10 years. Here's what Toyota said. There's not many other car companies with a fuel cell hydrogen car riding around right now. We'll launch our first battery electric vehicle into the market in Australia next year. We've got hybrid vehicles. We'll have plug-in hybrid vehicles. And the point is, we believe that carbon is the enemy. And to get carbon neutrality, you've got to offer a diverse range of technologies relevant to the market that you are in. So what do you think? Would you consider buying a Toyota Hiace electric? Personally, I have to say I wouldn't. I don't want to support Toyota. I believe that they are anti-EV and they're only just sort of coming to the party in a very small piecemeal way here to appease investors, to appease the public. I don't think they're taking EV seriously still. And that's reflected by the fact that very, 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 very small number of their current production portfolio is electric. In fact, they only plan on having 30% of their cars sold worldwide in 2030 as being EVs. In fact, they don't even plan going on going all EV by 2045. I personally think they still think they can sell internal combustion engine vehicles in 2040. Frankly, in my view, that is ridiculous because what is an internal combustion engine? It is something that pollutes. You breathe in those fumes, and yes, they do actually cause cancer. I think Toyota doesn't care about that and really doesn't care about the health or well-being of you or anyone else. They care about one thing, which is profits. I understand that, but it doesn't make me want to support them. However, all that said, it is really good to see Toyota will build an electric high ace. I think demand for the electric high ace will be enormous, and it will go some way towards proving to Toyota that yes, Electric vans and electric vehicles are most certainly the future. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Do you think Toyota is taking EV seriously? And would you consider buying an electric Toyota van?